My name is John Rascala. I'm 22 years old, and my parents are from the Middle East. Thank you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but luckily, they came to America a year before I was born. So they gave me number one on American baby names, which is why my name is John. <laughs> it beat Abdul Rahman. <laughs> I, got, I got away with the names, didn't get away with some of the characteristics of being an Arab. Like I have a lot of body hair. <laughs> I, I grew this beard 30 minutes before I got here. <laughs> it's already back. And you know, the babies in America, they come out looking all shiny and bald. And I came out looking like a coconut wrapped in a towel. <laughs> Crazy. My body kind of looks like the Amazon rainforest. But I tried putting Nair in it the other day. Now it looks like the Amazon rainforest after the fire. <laughs> Speaking of fires, I'm from California. I, I live in the non-smoking section of California. And it's, it's legal to grow weed now. So with these fires, our firefighters are just hungry all the time. Thank you. Uh, one of the fires was started by a gender reveal. I hate gender reveals. Your baby needs... Yeah, me too. Your baby needs to be the Messiah if you think I'm going to the gender reveal and the baby shower. That is too much time and money for a baby who could turn out to be a TikToker. It's not worth it. I, I, feel, I feel bad for this baby in particular. Imagine being born and owing the government $8 million because it took a wildfire to reveal your gender. I can imagine his parents now being like, all right, Sparky. You just turned. You just turned two. It's time to get a job. Please. We, what are you saying? Dad, dad? Debt. Debt. He's saying debt. Okay, good. He knows. I'm like, there's no point to gender reveals in California. Because why would I go to one when you're a baby when I'm going to have to go to another one when you turn 17? <laughs> I've lived in California for uh, 22 years and I finally got around to surfing last month for the first time and boy did y'all lie to me. Said it was fun. It was a CrossFit workout in a washing machine. I imagined, you know, a hula girl would come out of the water, jump on my board, we'd ride off into the sunset. Now it was just a bunch of 13 year olds paddling faster than me, trying to give me advice. I accidentally hit one with my board, but I wasn't trying to surf. <laughs> uh, my mom is all like, she's like, John, you can't surf, okay? You're gonna get bit by a shark. And I'm like, mom, no shark likes hair in their food. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this man gets it, he's like, call back, he knows. I am Palestinian, sorry, <laughs> Palestinian. I found out I was Palestinian because my Jewish friends started moving into my house. I can say that, I can say that joke. As a Palestinian, I have the solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, okay? Hear me out, if you're a global leader, write this down. We just want what the Americans gave to the Native Americans when they took their land. Casinos. That's all we want. Open, open up the Aladdin, open up the Alibaba, maybe the Gaza Strip Club, right next to it. Right? The Saudis will flock in, I promise. I don't get it why Arabs have such a bad rep in, in America, you know? Like, especially in the South. We have the same culture as the South. We both love guns, we both love fireworks, and we both marry our cousins. <laughs> it's the same thing. You know, even the census gets it. They get that we're the same thing, you know, because Arabs have to mark white on the census. Unless there's a terrorist attack, we have to mark other. <laughs> yeah. 
There are some things in the Arab culture that I wish transferred over to America, like arranged marriages. You know, I don't want to go out and find my soulmate. I want to know that I'm legally binded to a woman named Fatima, and my family's three goats richer because of it. Right? Like, I have such a hard time with dating. I'm so good at talking to girls, they instantly think I'm gay. They like showing me pictures of the guys they like, and all I have to say is, eh, he's pretty cute. <laughs> have y'all ever heard of the friend zone? Yes. I've been in the friend zone so many times, I started paying the electric bill. <laughs> I had one of my female friends come up to me, be like, John, I want you to be the mate of honor at my wedding. Oh. I'm like, so you don't only want to friend zone me now, you want it up on display at your wedding? <laughs> I'm gonna, imagine this, I'm gonna be up there in a pink suit, matching with all the other bridesmaids. They're all mad at me because she picked a guy over them. And then I'll be watching you walk down the aisle, standing behind the groom, we're both crying for different reasons. And then I'll be at the reception giving the speech, be like, you know what, I hope your mom's right and you're miserable. Cheers. <laughs> I went to a private Christian university, and the girls at a private Christian university are way different. There's two extremes of them. There's the girls who will marry you in under a week, and the girls who are too busy because they're already in a relationship with Jesus. So I'm going for that front. I'm growing out my hair, growing out my beard, posting my carpentry on Instagram. My mom thinks it's her job now to find me a woman. So she follows the Instagram page of my university and sends me the girls in the marketing and just goes, find them. <laughs> and so I'm running around campus being like, hey, you looked really hot on that poster. My mom thinks we should date. <laughs> my dad's also trying. He like takes me aside at family parties and goes, hey, what do you think of her? She's pretty cute, right? Get her number. I'm like, dad, I have her number. She's my cousin. <laughs> He's like, it makes it easier. I know her parents. <laughs> I found out quarantining is pretty easy for us because apparently my parents have been quarantining us our whole life. They've kept us locked in, away from the virus of sin. But we definitely caught sin. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm jealous of homeschooled kids though. Homeschooled kids were prepared for the pandemic, okay? Right? They're probably mocking us right now, like, oh, you don't get to go to prom? I've had prom in my living room five years in a row. <laughs> I had a ballroom dance with my dad. <laughs> oh, you don't get to drive your nice car to school? I wake up, I'm at school. <laughs> I spent nine months in my professor's stomach. <laughs> Yeah, so homeschooled kids win. I wish I was homeschooled, but then again, my parents hardly know English, so I probably wouldn't be able to be up here right now. Like, have you seen Alexa and Siri at my house trying to understand my dad's accent? Oh, it's rough, man. Alexa just quit last week. <laughs> Apparently, phlegm is not a letter they understand. And every time my dad goes up to Siri and goes, call home, she calls Homeland Security. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> but they sent me to public school where I learned the right form of English, you know? And uh, public school was great, but there was a little bit of bullying. Like, I got bullied by this guy who worked at Chick-fil-A, which wasn't bad, because I would just walk into his shift and have him be nice to me for hours. <laughs> Drop a tray, talk to the manager. Brandon, you didn't say my pleasure. You're cooking the Lord's chicken. Put some more sauce. <laughs> My dad tried to give me advice on bullying. He's like, John, we're Christian. So you take them by the arm, put it behind their back, push them up against the wall and say, I forgive you. <laughs> but I get why I was bullied though, you know? My parents tried to raise us like we were still in the Middle East. While all the other kids went to Disney World, they would take us to the Middle East for vacation. And, and looking back, it kind of was like Disney World. 
You know, the water was murky like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. There were fireworks, but they came down. And Princess Jasmine was in the parade, but she was holding an AK and wearing a Death to America t-shirt. It's kind of the same. Public school helped though, because I learned how to act in public school. And my theater was the school nurse's office. That's where I learned how to act, okay? There's a couple steps to it, okay? The first step is, you gotta pick, is this video game worth the next two hours of a brilliant performance as a kid who is sick? Okay, once you got past that, you gotta go to step two, pick your condition. Stomach pain, head pain, you can't say fever, because she's got one of the best thermometers in the game, okay? Third thing is you gotta pick your walk up to the nurse's office. You gotta do the limp groan, or the flailing arms, or the crawl. Yeah, I don't have to do it, you get it. <laughs> so once you've walked up to the nurse's office, you're gonna wanna sit there, still act sick. Oh, nurse Becky, it, it hurts. Just call my mom. And then you hear it, your standing ovation, your mom on the other end of the phone. You pick it up, you go, mom, I'm not lying this time. Come pick me up. You pass all the other kids who are being sent back to Common Core. <laughs> you get in your car, boom, go home, you're an actor. It's perfect. And so I tried to use my acting skills at my private Christian university, but the nurse there was like, oh, you're sick? It's just the Holy Spirit running through you. <laughs> go back to class. And I was kind of worried because our campus safety is just a room of people praying. <laughs> our campus safety officer, he doesn't have a belt with a gun. It's the belt of righteousness. <laughs> yeah. I got hit by a car in junior high, which probably explains everything. <laughs> I got hit by an old lady in a smart car who made a wrong left, hit me. I flew back, landed on my backpack. Paramedic took me over to the side. He's like, John, count to 10. I'm like, why? He's like, we gotta check if your head's all right. I'm like, shouldn't you check if the old lady's head's all right? <laughs> and I was like, okay, also, can you tell the nurse I'm not lying this time? <laughs> Yeah, um, I tried to sue the old lady, but my dad wouldn't let me. He's like, John, we're Christians, we don't sue. Now he's being sued by the student loan company from my university. <laughs> dad, we're Christians, we don't take loans. <laughs> I'm waiting till he makes the final payment before I tell him I could have learned everything online. Could have photoshopped that diploma easily. <laughs> and now we're paying six figures, woo. Uh, <laughs> My dad's great and all, but he's, he's developed this new addiction that's like hurting our family um, to Fortnite. He's heard <laughs> yeah, he's addicted to Fortnite. He plays, plays it all the time. Have any of you ever played Fortnite? No? You're probably better than my dad. Way better than my dad at Fortnite, yeah. It's hard to watch, it really is. It's hard to respect a man who's consistently disrespected by 13-year-olds <laughs> online. <laughs> And I have to sit there and watch him be like, Dad, just turn off the Xbox, please. Dad, don't talk back, please. <laughs> My dad's gonna get canceled one day. I know it. Just because he likes playing this game where he guesses people's ethnicities right to their face. <laughs> He's like, Chinese. They're like, no, Nigerian. Oh, that, that was close. My second guess. <laughs> and I'm over there like, please, he's our only income. Don't post the video on Twitter. <laughs> Please. My dad thinks I'm entitled, and I, I get it why I'm entitled. I'm in my room every day like, Spotify, play my favorite song. <laughs> Uber, take me to McDonald's. You know what, forget it. Postmates, bring me the McDonald's. <laughs> Tesla, you drive. Okay, it's, it, I got my own kingdom going on in there. The only, the only way to conquer me is to change the Wi-Fi password. <laughs> really, yeah. I love it. I love the clapping. It boosts my narcissism. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Um, <laughs> have you guys heard of this new app called Find My Friends? Where you can track your friends wherever they are. 
oh, it's great. I don't have to text my friends to hang out anymore. I can just bump into them at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> like, oh, what are you doing here? What are the odds? We bump into each other. You want to hang out? No? Okay, I'll find another friend who's in public. <laughs> my dad's trying to make me more of a man, you know? Getting me weightlifting. We went hunting. He paid $200 for the gear, the outfits. We're all in the cold, shivering. I turn to him, I'm like, Dad, we could have just gone to a petting zoo and asked for an old deer we could stab. Right? <laughs> Sorry, PETA. Sorry. Sorry, the only PETA I know is PETA bread. Okay, that's the, that's the only PETA. Yeah, I try to go to camp, but my dad's like, you can't, you shouldn't go to camp. I'm like, why, Dad? And then I realized that the camps in his country are training camps. I don't know how they sing Kumbaya with ski masks on, but it happened. Um, my dad's mom lived with us, my grandma. She's about this tall. She's got the anger issues of Charlie Sheen without the drugs, you know? And I had to be the one to teach her how to use her new iPad. And I thought it'd be easy, like, Grandma, this is Fox News. This is your Arabic TV shows. This is the weather, but no, it's the basics. It's like, Grandma, just a finger, not your whole fist. Not your whole fist on the iPad. We don't have Apple Care, Grandma, please. No, she's great. She puts money in her bra. So, <laughs> so every time I need money, I'm like, Grandma, let's belly dance. Come on, shake it. Shake it. I got her a TikTok. It's great. Anybody have a Middle Eastern mom in the audience? Nobody? God bless you. Oh. Oh. I love that woman, but she puts the fear of God in me. She's got a tight grip. One look, I'm like, Mom, I did it. I'm sorry, okay. I, I, one time I came home past my curfew and I drove past the freeway and saw my car on the Amber Alert. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually in film school so I can make a horror film with my mom as the main villain. Listen first. <laughs> You'll get it. Because I'd rather have Michael Myers in my closet than her taking off her shoe, throwing it at me. It doing a Matrix thing, going around the corner, hitting me every time. I'd rather have Freddy Krueger in my dreams than checking my phone and seeing I have eight missed calls from Mama. Yeah, you don't want to do that. When she goes shoe shopping, she, it's just target practice for her. She's just like, oh, a little too much on the left. She, she, she still hits me. I don't know how she did it the other day, but she hit me while driving, and I was in the back seat. I don't know how that works. Thank you. I love this man. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's good. That's good. good. Good thing they're not recording this. <laughs> my mom is uh, the voice of my moral compass. I don't know when she did the voiceovers, but she's always in my head. Like, I accidentally walk into a bar, okay? Accidentally take a sip of my drink, and I hear, John, what are you doing? I will rip your lips off. <laughs> or I'm in the movie theater by myself, and an unnecessary naughty scene comes up, and all I hear is, John, close your eyes. God is watching you. <laughs> and I'm covering my eyes by myself at this movie theater. Or even I'm up here doing stand-up and I hear her, you better not be doing my accent. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm John Riscala. Great to be with you. Have a great night. My name is John Riscala. Thank you so much for checking out my special. But before you go, you can still tip. So you know how you tip waiters, Uber drivers. You can now tip comedians in $1 amount, $5 amount, $10 amount, $2 million amount so I can move out of my house. My mom thinks I won't amount to anything, so I'd love to show her these tips to be like, hey mom, someone watched the entire special and even wants to help me do more. She won't believe it, but I need the proof. Thank you.